Welcome back to another cold email video. In this video specifically, we're gonna go over four battle-tested cold email strategies that I've been testing for myself and my clients to basically help you explode your demand generation using this channel. The reason why I put so much emphasis on cold email is because it's probably the first place we should be going before we try paid advertising or other channels which are more expensive because cold email is just a great sandbox to be playing in to test your messaging, to be testing your offer, to be testing all sorts of different things. So once we get really good at cold email, we can go to more advanced and more scalable demand generation type methodologies or type strategies such as paid media using Facebook or LinkedIn ads or you know YouTube ads. Also, the ROI from cold email is incredible. A recent report, I think HubSpot was talking about it, but the reports from somewhere else were saying that email, this is not specific with cold email, but email has an ROI of 4,200%. So for every $1 spend, the business would get $42 back, which is really, really great. And if you think about your cold email box, personally, I'm more addicted to checking my emails than any other social media platform. So to sum it all up, cold email is quick and cheap. If you're just getting started, or if you're really advanced already and you haven't cracked your cold email strategy, I would recommend it because you can just get clients really quickly. You can get demos super quick. You can be sending emails on a Monday and already on Tuesday, you've got uh, booked appointments in your calendar. It's really quick and easy. If you're just getting started, just start sending really hyper personalized videos. So let's jump into the video and look at these strategies specifically. This video is sponsored by my blog, b2bhero.co. There's a link in the description below. It's basically just a lot of content. I'm gonna be releasing two to three blog um, articles a week in the near future. And it's just gonna be so many resources for B2B SaaS companies, freelancers, or any B2B company. So b2bhero.co, check out the link below. So strategy number one is called the first liner method. And this is basically when we customize that first line in a way which connects with you know the prospect. There's a whole methodology about how to do this. And I've got another video on each of these strategies, so definitely check out the playlist. But the first line of method is something that just works really, really well. The pros of the first line of method are that you just get really good conversion rates, you get very small amount of negative feedback because you've personalized that first line. You know, you're, you've said something personal to the prospect, which is about the prospect, it's not about you. So you, you know, you've mentioned an article they've written or a comment that they've, you know, made on a post on LinkedIn, which you've liked and also, um, you know, agree with, and you've mentioned a specific post, or you know, you've connected them with with them in some way. Maybe you've gone to the same university somehow you've connected with the prospect in that first line. The pros of this strategy are that you get very high conversion rates. I think I got something between four to 6% of the people I email turn into a demo or a scheduled phone call, you know, a sales call, which then we can convert into a you know, high paying client, hopefully. So that's really, really great. The second pro of the strategy is that we get quite low amount of negative feedback. You don't get much because you've personalized. So the person who's emailing back knows you put a little bit of effort in. So people are way more responsive when you personalize. If And we'll talk about the next more scalable strategy in a minute, but having the first line of method, having a first personalized line gives you quite low negative feedback, which is such a good thing. The downside on the other hand is that it's hugely time consuming. It takes me somewhere between three to five minutes per prospect. So if you do the maths, if you're doing 50 emails a day, I don't know, it takes a few hours per a group of prospects per day. So it's really time consuming, but it's definitely worth it. The, the conversion rates are great. It's a great place to start. And I definitely recommend personalizing your emails. So the results, to be completely honest, I didn't have so much time to send a huge amount of emails. I only sent out 200 emails, but the results were ridiculous. I mean, it just shows when you put some real time and effort into it, you get really good results. So from the 200 emails, I got nine scheduled phone calls for my business, Superlumen, and two of those phone calls turned into clients. And my clients, are worth anywhere between eight to 15,000 pounds, the lifetime value, and it depends on what they get sold. You know, I bring them in with LinkedIn advertising, but they, I might upsell them other services um, as well. I work with freelancers to do other services. I don't, don't do everything myself, but out of 200 emails, 
I got two clients, which is a 1%, 1% conversion rate from sending a cold email to getting a client, which is ridiculously high and therefore I highly recommend this strategy. But there is a caveat. I don't think this is a normal conversion rate at all. I, in Previously when I've done this, I haven't had such high conversion rates. So something just worked out really, really well here. Maybe it's because I really understand my ICP and I've done a lot of work around, you know, how big is my market? And what is the challenges my ICP is facing? Who should I specifically be contacting? Because I could be contacting, you know, other growth marketers, demand generation type job titles, CEOs from larger companies. I could be going to enterprise Price, or I could be doing you know founders from SaaS companies and I've a B tested that quite a lot so I knew exactly who I should be going to hit and exactly the kind of messaging per specifically in each market segment or ICP segment so that's really important I think is understanding how to connect with them um, and I think that's why my conversion rates are going much much higher so method number two I tried is something I've called the direct method and it's basically using zero personalization and going really heavy on the A B testing just the messaging the kind of sales part you know how do we approach that is it all about talking about oh I have a case study here which is kind of like you or do we approach it in a way which is like you know these are the three main benefits of what I do is it, are you interested you know you go straight in for the kill which is like when none of us have any time to waste this is what I do is this something you're interested in this is kind of a method that does work in a way but the con is that I ended up getting a ton of really negative or bad feedback, which totally ruined my domain authority. I had a lot of feedback just saying, look, just one word's not interested or delete me from the, your list. Just really not very good messages, which doesn't send a very good signal to the domain providers. I wouldn't really go down this method, but there are, you know, it actually works in a really weird way. Obviously, one of the pros of this method is that it's just hugely scalable. You don't really have to do much. Once you've A-B tested your messaging, you don't really have to do much. You upload your you know, um, list into woodpecker.co or whatever uh, cold email tool you use. If that's you know woodpecker.co, Mailshake, Lemlist, I use woodpecker.co. So you gotta really think about whether or not you wanna use this though because it's all about understanding how big your market is. How big is your TAM, SAM, and SOM? The total addressable market, um, serviceable addressable market, and serviceable obtainable market. You know, If your SOM, serviceable obtainable market, is small, then it's not really worth to do this. Like my my total addressable market is in the tens of thousands. It's not massive. I still want to be here in a few years' time, so I don't want to spam my total addressable market with emails which just annoy them. I would rather go through them one by one. Because also, if I want to scale this and I hire a full-time, you know, salesperson or you know, biz dev guy, they can get through this list over the course of a year. They can get through quite a lot of different people by just personalizing. So there's no point just sending out hundreds of emails a day or a week and spamming, get a lot of bad feedback and getting loads of clients to start with, for me that wouldn't work. For you, it might be. So the results, I ended up sending 329 emails and I got 24 replies. The bad fact of that was 19 of those 24 were bad replies, basically saying not interested. Um, and five or more was positive. And out of those five, two became sales calls. And out of those two sales calls, I actually did close one sales call, um, which got into a kind of lower end of my spectrum type of client, which is a 6K lifetime value. So in a way, by doing very little effort, I did actually convert a 6K, you know, I, I made revenue from something which takes very, very little effort. So this method can work, but you really have to focus heavily on A-B testing that messaging side. And you need to be, you know, willing to really get a lot of bad replies and just burn for your total addressable market, which I don't recommend personally. So the third method is the Loom method. And I call it the Loom method because I used a software Loom, which is a video screen share type recording software, where you can send people in an email, embedded in the email, a video with their, you know, their profile, their LinkedIn profile in the background or their um, website in the background, and you can directly talk to them. So this is a hyper-personalized video video strategy which just works really really well and in fact I would nearly you know strongly urge everyone just to do this send up 10 a day and just see your results because I think you're going to get incredible results and just have a spiel have a concept concept 
which over time you get more and more better with. So the first few I sent were jittery. I didn't really know what I was saying and they weren't very good. By the 10th, I was just like, it was just flowing. I basically was saying the same thing for each prospect, but directly talking to them with their website, the background. So, you know, I was just saying, yo, John, how are you? How are you? I've noticed you don't do LinkedIn ads because I've got, you know, I've got the Pixel Helper, LinkedIn Pixel Helper. They don't have an insight tag. So I say, look, I, I noticed you don't do LinkedIn ads. Is this something you'd be considered? I've noticed your sales led business. You probably have a high lifetime value from, you know, I've investigated your business a little bit. And it looks like LinkedIn ads could be really beneficial for you. LinkedIn ads aren't for everyone, but I can see it is for you. So if you'd be interested for a 15 minute phone call, give me a shout, um, hit the calendar link below. You know, something really simple and you just do this over and over again, 10 times a day. Ideally create a list um, with everything set up, their LinkedIn profile, their website, and that email, and you just go through that list one by one, you get that LinkedIn profile, you get their website, and you click between the two of your face and directly talk to them, say their name, and it just works really, really well. I urge you, please, just do this strategy. You're gonna see incredible conversion rates. So obviously the con of this strategy is that it's not that scalable. I was just doing 10 a day, but I think if you ended up you know, doing 10 a day and you're earning revenue and you're trying to expand your business. So if you're a freelancer, just do a few until you get enough clients and then don't you know, stop. Um, but if you're like a B2B SaaS company or you're a freelancer trying to become like a you know, agency or consulting company and you wanna scale this out a little bit, then you, know, you can basically hire a full-time person just to be doing this strategy. But the con is obviously that it's not, it's, you know, it's hugely time consuming. It's as time consuming as the first line of method. That goes on par. In fact, I've worked better with video. It could be even less time consuming than the first line of method. So the three main benefits of this strategy is that the conversion rates are really high. We'll look at the results in a minute. The replies are just really positive. People are just really positive because they can see the effort you've put in. You're literally sending a personalized video to an individual. So I, we, I, you know, I got amazing replies, um, just positive replies. And the third benefit, it kind of primes the prospect for the sales call already. So they're coming with this good energy. They feel good about you. They've seen your face. They know your personality a little bit. They've, you know, it primes the prospect for the sales call. So the conversion rate on the sales call in theory should be better as well. So I only sent out 50 over a course of a week. I did 10 a day for five days. At the moment, I'm very, very busy. So I'm struggling to do, you know, do this for months at a time. But out of those 50, I got 27 replies, which is over 50% reply rate, six meetings booked. And out of those two, out of those meetings, six meetings, I got two clients, which is just ridiculous. You know, I really highly recommend this strategy or the first line of strategy if you're really uncomfortable doing video, but just challenge yourself to be good on camera, to be good in a Loom video. So the fourth strategy I tried is using Lemlist, which is, you know, a cold email tool and using Lemlist advanced dynamic features which they have you know inbuilt in their tool so i created a concept during the pandemic um, i didn't test it now again i haven't had the time but i did do a massive campaign last year which i'm drawing the results from but basically during the pandemic everyone was doing these video meetings and even you know internal video meetings so me and my uh, biz dev guy at the time we created a concept where we dynamically took our faces two pictures of our faces and Lemlist have this tool where in the background it takes a screenshot of the prospect's website automatically. So if you're, you know, if it's phil at b2bhero.co, the Lemlist will go automatically to, to b2bhero.co and take a uh, screenshot of the home page and it'll dynamically put it behind these two photos of me in a box and my sales guy in a box and it looks like we've taken a screenshot of us on a Zoom meeting. Um, and the email is, hey, we were in a Zoom meeting uh, we're in our weekly meeting and we were talk discussing your business. Um, if you click on the link, you can you know find out more. We've got a video for you. So the conversion rate would, would be people clicking on the image, the dynamic image, going to a landing page, which is also dynamically created by Lemlist with you know individual parts like the names of the company and the people and the logo even. And there's a video which is more standard. And the video is just basically talking about, hey, this is our, you know, what we do. This is what we are talking about. And it just worked really, really well. It's like trying to use these advanced features to scale our um, personalization. So we're not really personalizing. Um, some people could say you're kind of tricking your prospect. I've seen people say that. 
I totally disagree with that. We need to use the tools we have. It's one that worked quite well actually and I would recommend although you're going to have to change the concepts around this is a concept I created so the pros are that it's highly scalable and you know you're per scaling your personalization so highly scalable which is really really awesome and also the feedback was really great people were like oh this is an interesting experience that they hadn't experienced before they saw the dynamic page you know they saw the dynamic image in the email they saw a video on a web on on uh, dynamic um, landing page from Lemlist and they have the calendar there so it's all really simply done and when they get to that dynamic page they can just book in your calendar directly on the page because your calendar is embedded on that page so the experience was good and the feedback I got was really positive because people were like oh this is really interesting the downside of this concept is that it's a bit gimmicky and I don't think it'll really work like if loads of people start doing this exact same concept it's eventually just gonna, you know, the conversion rates are gonna drop off a cliff. So you gotta be constantly thinking about new concepts. And, you know, you don't have to constantly think of one concept, which is original, and then you can, you know, that you can play that out for a few months probably before it becomes old. So as you can probably tell, I'm all about personalization. And from doing these tests, the personalization stuff is 100% the stuff that works. If you're a B2B company with a not huge total addressable market, if your total addressable market is in the millions, you're more likely B2C or, you know, have a very low uh, lifetime value, you know, you're selling something which is cheaper, then fair enough, you can just spam people, get bad feedback, change your domain. Just go for it. That's not the kind of businesses that I work with. The kind of businesses I work with are B2B SaaS companies or I'm a freelance consultant and we don't have total address markets which are in the millions, we're more in the tens of thousands. So therefore just go through your total address market slowly with personalization. It's just a better way of behaving as well. Another factor that has a huge impact on your cold email is the way it's written. And I've got another video coming out which you can find right here.